Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the World of Sharks and Their Relatives, presented by Minorities in Shark Sciences. Minorities in Shark Sciences is a brand new organization. We were founded in June of 2020 by four Black women shark scientists. We strive to be seen and take up space in a discipline which has been largely inaccessible for women of color. We strive to be positive role models for the next generation. We seek to promote diversity and inclusion in shark science and encourage women of color to push through barriers and contribute knowledge in marine science. Finally, we hope to topple the system that has historically excluded women of color and create an equitable path to shark science. We believe diversity in scientists creates diversity in thought, which leads to innovation. We offer several programs, including weekend workshops on the research vessel, the Garvin, hosted by the Field School in Miami. We also offer several internship programs with our partners around the world. We engage in K through 12 outreach and provide professional development and network opportunities for our members. We currently have over 140 members representing 15 different countries. Today, we are gonna have some of our members introduce themselves and tell you about some of their favorite shark and ray species. So let's get started. Let's begin in California with Annabelle Gong, who's going to tell us about one of their favorite shark species, the leopard shark. Hi, everyone. My name is Annabelle Gong, and I am a grad student at the University of San Diego in San Diego, California. The shark that I study is called the leopard shark, and they are found every summer here in La Jolla, California, which is just about 20 minutes north of San Diego. And so the really cool thing about the sharks that are specifically in La Jolla is that they're mostly female pregnant leopard sharks. And you might be wondering, why are all these mama leopard sharks in this one area just grouped together? And we actually kind of think we know why. Um, so these leopard sharks like to stay in this cove, which is protected and sheltered from a lot of wave action. So the water inside the cove is a lot calmer and also a lot warmer and we think that they are incubating or warming up their their eggs inside their tummy so that their baby leopard sharks can grow faster um, while they're pregnant and so i think this is really cool that these mama leopard sharks have learned where the warmer waters are potentially and um yeah if i were to give these sharks a rating i would give them 10,000 out of 10 and no one can argue with me on that because they are one of my favorite sharks and they're also so cute so uh thanks for listening thanks to annabelle for sharing that wonderful piece of information about leopard sharks here we have a photo of a leopard shark in case you're curious what they look like all right, let's visit our next Miss member. Moving down to Mexico, Triana is going to tell us about the bull shark. Hey everybody, my name is Triana Arguedas and I am a second year master's student at El Colegio de la Frontera Sur and I study bull sharks. Some really cool facts include females can generally grow up to six and a half feet long and juveniles can be found in estuary and river systems, just like this one. I give bull sharks six stars out of five. <laughs> Thanks to Triana. In case you're curious as to what a bull shark looks like, here's a picture of one right here. All right, let's see who's next. We're moving on to Texas, where Lauren is going to tell us about the bonnet head shark. Hi there, my name is Lauren Eve Simonitis, and I am a shark researcher at Texas A&M University at Galveston. So my favorite shark is the shark that I study, which is the bonnet head shark. 
So that they're my favorite shark for a couple reasons. The first is that they are actually able to digest seagrass. So bonnet heads eat by chomping along the bottom and sometimes they get a lot of seagrass in their mouth that they accidentally eat. So for a while we thought they were just accidentally eating this and not gaining anything from it. But recently they were the they're the only shark that this has been shown in, but it's been proven that they're able to actually digest the seagrass and get some nutrients from it. Also, bonnethead sharks are the only shark that we know of that shows sexual dimorphism in their head shape. And what that means is that males and females have different head shapes. I give this shark a rating of 150 out of 10 because I have watched 150 hours of footage of these guys swimming around a tank for my project. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. In case you guys are curious as to what a bonnet head looks like, this is a bonnet head. How adorable is that shark? Next, we're moving down to Colombia with a Colombian shark scientist, Camila, and she's going to tell us about the sharp nosed shark. Hi everyone, my name is Camila Cáceres and I am a shark biologist from Florida International University. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about sharp-nosed sharks. Sharp-nosed sharks actually include seven different species that can be found all over the world, including the Australian, Caribbean, and Brazilian sharp-nosed shark. Sometimes it's very difficult to ID the species of these sharks because they look very similar unless you do a genetic analysis or sometimes if you dissect them there is a one vertebrate difference between the species. I would give these sharp nosed sharks a five stars out of five um, because they reproduce pretty quickly and are very common in artisanal fisheries. Thanks to Camilla for all of that really interesting information. Here we have an example of one of the sharp nose species, the Atlantic sharp nose, which is found uh, here in the waters of Florida. Let's see what's going on with our next Miss member. In Delaware, Maria is going to tell us about the smooth dogfish. My name is Maria Savando. I am a starting master's student at the University of Delaware and my shark is the smooth dogfish or Mustelus canis. A couple cool facts about them is that they are viviparous, meaning they're one of the few sharks to give birth to life young, usually in litters of 10 to 20. This means that the pups have a connection with their mom through their placenta. Another really cool thing about them is that the juveniles are sometimes able to give the impression of changing color, so they either become darker or lighter through the contraction or relaxation of these little migratory pigments called melanopores, and they are mainly thought to do this for camouflage. I give these little swimming disco balls a very solid 10 out of 10. Awesome, thanks to Maria, and we're never going to get the image of a shark disco ball out of our head. Here we have our, our smooth dogfish. Let's see what's going on in Australia with our member, Melissa, who's going to tell us about black tip reef sharks. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Cristina Marquez and I am a PhD candidate at Curtin University here in Western Australia. I study two types of sharks, but the main one is the black tip reef shark, also known as Carcharhinus melanopterus. They are a species of rec reef shark that get their name from the prominent black tips on their fins. Now, they're a common species found in tropical Indo-Pacific uh, coral reefs and in shallow coastal waters, and researchers have found that they're actually quite home bodies as well. Uh, on average, they can get up to seven feet long, uh, but they can, they they tend to be more around the five foot range. So because of their cute faces, their very shy demeanor, and just because they look adorable overall, I give these sharks a 10 out of 10. Great, and in case you needed proof of their adorableness, here's a awesome photo of a black tip reef shark. How cute. Okay, coming back over to the United States, we are going to visit the National Aquarium with Jenny Jansen to figure out some information about the sand tiger shark. 
And behind me, I have some sand tiger sharks. And sand tigers are one of the most common large sharks that you'll find in public aquariums in the US. These sharks are also known as gray nurse sharks or ragged tooth sharks in other parts of the world. So to make sure everybody keeps it straight as to which animal we're talking about, we'll also use their scientific name, which is Carcarius taurus. Now, some of the research that we do around these animals is that we'll look into their reproductive biology. So when we do their routine physicals, we'll actually draw blood and do ultrasound just like you would on a human. We also go out off the coast here in the mid-Atlantic and we'll find sand tigers that are migrating through the area. We'll collaborate with other aquariums and research partners and together we'll collect all sorts of data on each sand tiger that we catch and release. That way we can support as many research projects as possible because the information that we learn here about the animals that are fairly common in this area helps other populations of sand tigers that are actually endangered in other parts of the world. One fun fact about the sand tigers is that even though they generally look like they're one color, they actually have very faint spots if you look up close. And the spotting patterns that they have are unique to each sand tiger. So you can go to the website spotashark.com and you can see where scuba divers have photographed sand tiger sharks and then researchers can look at those spot patterns in the photographs and identify the animals individually, tell how many that there actually are in an area, where they're hanging out, and which other sand tigers they're hanging out with, which is basically social networking. Another fun fact is that the sand tigers will actually gulp air to help keep their buoyancy neutral. So they'll actually swim up and grab a gulp of air at the surface, and that helps them stay in the midwater column. And as you can see here, maybe, or if you go to a public aquarium, you can see sometimes they will swim super duper slow. So at a scale of one to 10, I'm giving the sand tiger sharks a solid two million, because why not? All right, two million out of 10, can't beat that. Here's a picture of one of these lovely sand tiger sharks. Now we're gonna move back down to Florida where Jasmine Graham is going to tell us about the small tooth sawfish. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Graham and I am a shark biologist. I am currently the Marseille Lace Project Coordinator at Moat Marine Laboratory. And I am going to talk to you about one of my favorite animals, the small tooth sawfish. The small tooth sawfish is a type of ray. And we actually have these here in Florida. So the small tooth sawfish, unfortunately, is listed as critically endangered which is just one step before extinction. Previously in the United States, we used to have two different species of sawfish, the large tooth sawfish and the small tooth sawfish. We unfortunately lost the large tooth sawfish population in the United States entirely, but our small tooth sawfish friends are still hanging on. In fact, Florida is one of the lifeboat populations that exists of the small tooth sawfish. Some really fun facts about them. Obviously, they are named sawfish because of this saw-like nose that they have, which is called a rostrum. They use this for hunting and defense. Another fun fact about these guys is that they can grow to be up to 16 feet long. How crazy is that? So if you're ever in the waters in Florida and you see one of these guys, be sure to report them to FWC because we track their movements um, so that we can better protect this really important species that we have here in Florida. I give the small tooth sawfish a solid 10 out of 10. Great, and in case you are wondering, here is a photo of the small tooth sawfish. If you are paying close attention in Jenny's video at the National Aquarium, you would have seen a large tooth sawfish swim by a couple of times as well. 
And with that, we'd like to thank you so much for joining this presentation of the world of sharks and their relatives presented by Minorities in Shark Sciences. If you want to find out more information about our organization, you can visit our website, www.missalasmo.org. There you can join our mailing list, find out more information about our programs, become a member of MISS, or become a friend of MISS. You also can feel free to go to our website and donate to support some of our programs. We're also on social media. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Miss underscore Elasmo. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Miss Elasmo. And you can check us out on YouTube by searching Minorities and Shark Sciences. Thanks again for joining us for this exciting presentation. We hope that you learned a lot and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors.